Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I think I'm going to have to write the title of the podcast down somewhere so I can remember what it's called. I always pause. Like it's, uh, maybe it's because I do so many different podcasts. I hope you're well. This is going to be a very short recording, which may, I can almost hear the applause out there. Um, well, wait a minute, it's Thursday, maybe you're clapping for the NHS, but it's going to be short. And it's a little technique. It's a little kind of visual technique. It's fun. But part of anxiety, stress can be it, sometimes, you know, like meeting new people or dealing with a difficult person or going into a difficult a situation where um, it's frazzling a little bit. Maybe it could be going, if you're in the UK, you could go to have uh, a benefit interview, you know, so they're uh, checking that you're uh, eligible for your benefits. Or you could be going to have... Uh, going to see a psychiatrist and or it could be any kind of situation where you may have in the past felt very uptight and stressed and not really perhaps not really felt very much in control of how you were feeling so this is a little technique that you can do inside your mind you could do this before you get there or you can do this as you get there. I mean, the, the first thing I would uh, advise is before you go to a meeting and see someone, rehearse it in your mind that it goes really well. So you can skip right to the end where you, you're getting home from the meeting whatever the thing is you had to do or you needed to go to, your home. You're walking through your front door. You know, you, you do your routine. For me, I take my coat off, put my keys on the hook, uh, do a little dance, you know, just standard stuff. Sometimes I balance a biscuit on my nose. It's just whatever your routine is that you do when you get into your home. And maybe you go and lay lay down on the bed, I would after um, a meeting probably, just to relax myself or you may make a cup of tea that's not really relevant the, the point is you skip through to that bit and then you imagine yourself going backwards but it's with a feeling of comfort so you're moving too fast backwards in your mind because uh, in a sense, if you don't know what the person, you may not know what the person you're going to meet is going to look like. But you've got an idea of the situation, you're sitting there talking. So you skip right the way back to the parts that you can kind of predict. For example, travelling on a bus, maybe on a train, walking, on a ta in a taxi, whatever the situation is. So you can kind of predict part of the journey and you can predict, you know, putting your coat on, your jacket on, putting your keys in your pocket, locking the front door with me, picking Andre up and trying to sort of stop him from getting out the front door, you know, uh, keep telling him, son, it's all right, darling, I'm going to be back. We'll go for a walk later. Give daddy kisses, kisses. And then I kind of put him in. Sometimes I try to distract him. And then I run out the front door. But 
So you kind of go from, you go right the way through to the end where you're feeling relaxed, you've done it, it's over, and then you skip forward or backwards, however you want to call it, to the beginning where you're just about to leave your home to go to this meeting. So that, and you, you stay in a relaxed state the whole time as you're imagining it. And you can do this a few times, so you're almost preparing yourself. It's, I guess, like going through uh, a thick forest that's all kind of overgrown. But you're not going there. Someone's going there before you, and they're making a pathway. They're cutting a path through the forage, is it? I don't know, whatever. You know, all the overgrowth. So there's a path already being cut through, so... You can just walk through it, which makes things a lot easier. And you do this in a, a calm, relaxing way in your mind. You feel relaxed when you do it. And I, mean, I suppose I could make a longer recording just on this alone, this preparation, and maybe I will. But this this isn't going to be one of those recordings. It's just going to be uh, the actual meeting itself or the situation. So do that a few times, you know, to prepare yourself calmly. And then when you think about meeting the person, notice how you feel. Notice how you feel. So uh, give an example, if it is a benefits officer that you're going to see, or if it is... um, It could be a probation officer, it could be a doctor, it could be whoever. Whoever the person is you're going to visit um, that's in the past, you've had, you know, quite difficult times stress-wise. It's almost like you've built, you've worked worked yourself up into a bit of a state before you even get there. This is, we're going to do the opposite here. We're going to do the opposite. And... I want you to imagine the person. If you know them, this is really good because then you can kind of visualize the person themselves. But you might not know the person you're about to meet, but you can imagine the person anyway because you're not going to be focusing on their face. So I want you to imagine a person uh, sitting in a chair opposite you. Maybe there's a desk there. Whatever the normal scenario is for those kind of uh, interviews where you're being questioned about your health and, you know, you feel a little bit, uh, a little bit interrogated maybe, but it's, a, it's one of those hoops you've got to, got to jump through. Uh, or it might be a job interview. Again, not always the most pleasant things unless you feel confident. So this is about confidence. This is about feeling confidence. And before you listen to it, you'll see the title. I won't tell you the title right now. And you might, so you all kind of already know, I guess, before you listen, kind of get an idea maybe where I'm going. But um, as I say it, if you didn't look at the title, you wouldn't. So... What I want you to do, sometimes different emotions basically squash other emotions. Some feelings can't live in the same space or can't stay in the same space as others. Like um, negativity, you can't have a negative thought and a positive thought at the same time. Even you may you may think, well, okay, you had it, but but it's it is literally negative, positive. Ne- the thoughts are changing constantly. If you feel it, may feel like it's all the time. You may think, well, I, I felt negative, and then I felt positive, and so I'm feeling both at the same time. You're not. Well, only one at a at a time. And you can actually almost dissolve a feeling by putting another feeling in. It's very much, 
I mean, it's a very, very basic analogy would be a bowl of hot water. Like really, really hot water. Too hot to put your fingers in. You add some cold water. And then it cools down. You add just a tiny little bit too much cold water. And it's too cold to do what you wanted to do. So you might have wanted to wash. Or wash some clothes. Or you might wanted to wash your face or whatever. And now you've got to put more hot water in because... It's too cold. It's not hot enough. It went from being too hot to too cold. And it's hard to get that hot water back. It's hard to get it hot again. Which doesn't make sense. Like, Why is it so hard to get, to get it back to where it was, to, to how I want it to be? So that's what this does. It changes the feeling to something else. And that feeling which let's say we label it stress, anxiety, worry, um, fear, whatever it is, all those uh, words I think would be valid. Uh, Terror, in fact, perhaps, when it comes to having to go to, uh, let's say, a for some people, going to a meeting, which perhaps we don't want to go to but we feel we're forced to do it uh, and maybe having to justify our illness, justify the whatever's wrong with us. Of course, this technique's not just for that. It could be, as I said, for job interviews. Some people don't like job interviews. Uh, it could be... It could be lots of different things. You could use some different scenarios. Way too many for me to sort of mention. Otherwise... It'll just be another really long recording. And uh, I, you know, I promised you it's going to be short, so I'm going to get on with it. And you probably don't believe me, but I am. So here's what we do. And if, you, if you're squeamish, or if you, you know, then perhaps don't listen to this. <laughs> I swear I should have said that at the beginning. But hey, I'll get you to listen to 15 minutes first, and then I'll say it. Um, But remember, this isn't, even though it's the techniques to help with a situation that you would class as serious for how how you feel or how you felt in the past, the technique to help with it doesn't have to be serious. So... I want you to imagine the person sitting opposite you doing the interview with you. The person that maybe up till now you might have been scared of. Not physically scared, but just um, almost like they're above you. They've got some kind of power over you. They can make decisions that can affect your life. and They're somehow superior and scary so we need to do something about that because that is not useful for anybody it's not use and I'm 100% most of the people in the position of doing an interview whether it's job interview or a medical interview or whatever it is I'm sure they don't feel that way either they're just human beings, in fact, they may be absolutely terrified themselves. They might be scared of doing it. They might not like interviewing people. So that's, you know, you can uh, absorb that anyway. But So what we're going to do is I want you to imagine the person sitting there and you're sitting opposite them, you know, behind the desk, they're behind the desk, you're the other side of the desk. And they're going to be asking you questions. But what what they know, and you don't know, but now you do, is that about, I don't know, two minutes before you came into the room, maybe three minutes, they farted. 
Okay, and they, it felt a little bit uncomfortable. It was like one of those farts that it was a little bit, they were a little bit unsure. It was a bit of a vague fart, a vague one. So they thought, is this a normal fart? I'll get this out before the the interview. And um, when you got in there, they might have sprayed something or maybe they just like the smell of farts. And then they realised that there's almost feels like a bit of a bubble, a bubble caught between their bum cheeks. That's the feeling they've got. And then now, now they're thinking, oh, maybe it wasn't just a fart. So they're sitting there. There's nowhere for them to go because you're you just come into the into the the thing and maybe they have to get up and let you in, but they're still clenching their bum together. And maybe they don't want to move around too much in case in case they find out exactly what it was. And then you know, just to do the interview. Doesn't that make the situation different? That person, that a situation that you were maybe scared of before, worried, uh, stressed even, and now you're imagining them, they're clenching their buttocks together because they may or may not have farted. The energy changes. The energy that was there before in your mind can't be there anymore. It's changed. It can't go back to what it was. It's like introducing the cold water to the boiling hot water. It's now the very, it's not going to get boiling hot again because you, you know, you've got a, a little bowl, a, a basin, and there's not enough room to put enough hot water in to get it to be really hot. So the best you're going to do is lukewarm. cancels it out and it feels different notice how you feel different when you think about that situation that maybe you were concerned about and you can use it for any scenario by the way it doesn't have to do have to be an interview or anything it could be meeting somebody it could be doing something it could be uh, even just going into a, a local shop, there might be a, a cashier that you don't particularly like, or you don't you don't feel you get on with them, or maybe you, it could be anything or a neighbour, and just imagine that. You know, you can use change and uh, manipulate the scenario for you, for your benefit. And just notice. See, I feel quite calm now. There's a calmness. I don't know if if you feel that. There's a real calmness. And so there's that rehearsal in your mind where you can imagine the person that's about to interview you. not knowing whether or, or not they've, they've actually farted. And that's it. That is the whole thing. So, may the force be with you. <laughs> Just give it a go. See how you feel. It's all about how you feel ultimately and
Just notice. Notice the changes. In physically how you feel, emotionally how you feel, and how much calmer you are. So I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to call this bubble fart stress relief, I think. <laughs> I don't know, I'll think of something. So remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. And I'm probably later on today going to try and do a relaxation session just you know, with, with, the, with and without music. So thank you for listening. Let me know how you get on. Lots of love. Bye.